I want to get better at painting. So I designed myself a week ish long lesson plan to work on a variety of techniques, mediums, subjects. At the beginning and end of the week, I will be painting the same image without reference for comparison to see if there's any kind of improvement. Do I think I can improve super dramatically over a week? Obviously not, but <laughs> the biggest thing that I want to accomplish is I really want to get better at drawing my own environments, designing different story worlds and things like that. I've drawn a quick sketch out. I've done a little fishing town on a river. I really wanted to have that sort of overcast, foggy feel, dealing with some atmospheric perspective and things like that. Sticking with a misty kind of muted color palette. I'm using acrylics for this. I would say that, believe it or not, that's probably my best medium, not that that's saying much. I usually start with blocking in all of the color areas essentially just to get the forms down on the page and separate everything. So I started with the river, putting in some of the wooden dock areas and also starting to add in all of the little hut areas. Then I started kind of defining some of the light values. Generally I like to paint everything that is one color when I mix it, which does often end end up being a little problematic because I often end up not painting in the most logical order of operations and then I have to go in and fix things later. Am I gonna stop painting like that? Probably not. <laughs> Even when we're not making a miniature, all of the techniques still are drawn to me. So we're of course gonna add in some moss and aging. Then finally I had to add in the fog. So I did this by watering down some white, very, very thin, and just adding more and more layers as we get further into the background. Now, honestly, this one turned out better than I expected. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a disaster. While I do definitely see quite a lot of room for improvement, I really don't dislike how this turned out at all. I think there's some really interesting qualities to it and I really like the color tones and the atmosphere. With all of that being said, let's start our week. I'm starting with grayscale mediums. So I'm starting off the simplest with pencil. I'm drawing from observations, so just things that I could see from where I was sitting. Using the only model I have available, my other hand. This was sort of a warm up of sorts. After doing a page of pencil drawings, I decided to move on to charcoal, which is actually one of my favorite materials. I really like the speedy quality of it. It makes shading and creating really interesting line work very easy. It really encourages you to sort of loosen up and draw a little bit more freely. Your time's important, but you're rewarding. Bad habits and warm signs. I went on to do some gesture drawing. Now I absolutely love gesture drawing, even if I'm not great at it. I still have a lot of fun doing it. There's a really great channel on YouTube that has timed gesture sessions that I use and I will link that. It has sections of one minute, two minute, five minute, and 10 minute drawing sessions. Starting with the one minute ones, you get used to really putting in the form as fast as you can. And then as the time gets longer and longer, your drawings can become a lot more detailed because you are able to use that quickness from the one minute ones. Moved into working with another material that I love, a sketch and wash pencil. It's almost like a watercolor pencil. Draw and shade in as you would with a pencil and then you go in with water and rework it a little bit like watercolor. I moved over to drawing from reference photos, so I decided to do a portrait. So this one was mainly focusing on values and also a little bit textures as well. Then I'm finally working with just black watercolor. I'm trying to get the most variety of subjects as I can. I haven't been tested like this before.
The next day I focused on colored mediums and I also decided today that I would use absolutely no black or white, only colors. So I'm starting simple again with one of my worst mediums, colored pencil. I'm drawing things from observation again, just like the previous day. I just wanted to get some shapes down to warm up and start the day. Then I moved into a photo reference and I decided I wanted to play with a sort of children's storybook style. I wanted to do pretty simplistic drawing and a lot of fun colors. I then moved into doing some portraits. I actually really enjoy doing portraits. Using highlighter for the lighting just has a really interesting look. Did end up mixing it with colored pencil, which may or may not have been a mistake. <laughs> I usually use ink and um, probably for good reason. I then moved into some gestural drawings using highlighter. Let me just say charcoal is so much easier. And then, we went into the watercolor. I wanna say sorry in advance for this entire section because I really did these beautiful reference images so dirty. And I think at one point this was looking okay. I tried to save it with lining it at the end. It just did not end up great. Then I started doing some boats from the Color and Light book. I worked on this one for a little while and then I didn't really like it. So I kinda just abandoned it halfway through and moved on. I am so sorry to the boats. At this point, I really just want wanted to redeem my watercolor skills. And while this one maybe turned out the best of all of the watercolor ones, it's uh, still not great. I have an obsession with filling the page. So I just drew some quick colored pencil leaves and a couple of other drawings. My last adventure for the day was painting Howl, especially his coat. I do really like how the colors turned out, but is it the best? Not really. Honestly, day two was just not my best day. Some days your drawing just is not happening the way you want it to, and that's okay. Even when your art doesn't turn out the way that you want it to, I do still feel like you learn a lot from it. So day two can still be considered a success. I see no point in living if I can't be beautiful. Today I decided to focus on nature. Starting off by drawing some wildlife. I really wanted to focus on things that centered around my fishing village. So I decided to draw some seabirds and fish with a blue fine liner. Are there any seabirds and fish in the painting? No, but we're just trying to put ourselves in the universe. It started to create some shading and lighting variation with hatching and cross hatching. We're venturing into the great outdoors today. With the fishing village in mind, I really wanted to work on water reflections because I've not had a chance to really study them before. So that is what I started with, working with acrylic. I started by working in the greens of the land and the trees around the water. I usually like to start in a middle tone and then work in the highlights and shadows. I also started working in the sky with some blues and some whites and different values. Then I finally moved on to working on the water. I really just tried to block in some colors first, then kind of work on the different reflections and putting in highlights and shadows. I think one of the trickiest things about this is that the water wasn't still, but it also wasn't moving in all places. It was only moving in some sections, so the small variations of the highlights and shadows in the water where it was moving was the most difficult. I also painted in the tree trunks in the foreground and added in as much variation of light into the trees as I could. Another difficult part with the water reflections was trying to get all of the colors right. The reflections do take on the color of whatever they are reflecting, but it is also slightly different based on the water. 
I went in and did some final details and then that one was complete. Later went back out to do some flowers. At this point, the light was changing very rapidly because it was getting closer and closer to sundown. So I did take a photo to use for a reference later in case I needed to make some adjustments. I really liked the way the light was hitting the leaves and the flower petals from behind and sort of filtering through. But I also feel like I didn't really capture that that well <laughs> in my painting. Blocked in all of the green areas and then started in adding the highlights and shadows and variations of value. Then I added in the flowers with some red. I really like the contrast of the super bright red on the green. But overall, I spent a lot less time on this one than the big water landscape that I did earlier. I overall just really enjoyed this day. I love plain air painting. It's very relaxing. Today I am focusing on architecture, vehicles, anything man-made. I am trying to gear these days towards what I am painting as my end goal, which is the fishing village of course, so I decided to start with some coastal fishing village ink drawings from photo reference. I'm focusing entirely on line work with these to create siding, textures, and try and bring more interest to the building. At the end I did also go in and fill in some dark areas with my favorite ink pen. It's a real chunky boy. After that, I'm moving into acrylic again. I decided I wanted to paint some window reflections. Window reflections are incredibly difficult for me. It's really hard to know where they would be reflecting from and make them look natural. I tried to do a similar angle as the ones that are in the fishing village. And yeah, man, these are so difficult. But this one actually ended up being so much fun. So I just kind of laid in the frame of the window and then started layering in some darks of the reflections where there are shadows and also keeping the sky area really light. I think the hardest part was trying to get that transparent quality right. I really enjoy the colors. This one was really interesting. I don't think I've ever painted anything like this before. Then I headed inside to do my last painting of the day, which was from a super cool reference image of an alleyway with all sorts of wires and structures and kind of this hazy lighting. I was losing light very fast <laughs> when I was working on this one, so I did it pretty quick and it's a little less refined generally, but I just really loved the composition of this one and especially the lighting and the colors going on. I think they were really dynamic and really had a great atmosphere, something that I really <laughs> love in paintings, which you will see tomorrow as well. I did this one more sketchy sort of than any of the other paintings that I did. So this one ended up generally a little less refined, but I still really like the value differentiation and a lot of the compositional elements. Moving in to my favorite day. One of my favorite things to do is focusing on cinematic composition and lighting. I think it might be obvious that this is my favorite kind of painting because it really translates over to cinematography and film work. I'm painting some stills from the game Ghost of Tsushima which is probably one of the most beautifully cinematic games I've ever seen. So many beautiful lighting and atmospheric effects and honestly endless source of inspiration for lighting and painting. I'm doing this kind of foggy moonlit forest image first. It has a little bit of atmospheric perspective and I just really love the super dramatic highlights that are throughout this entire game. It has just so much dynamic range which I think is super 
eye-catching. So I went ahead and laid in some colors first, just some greens and blues, starting to define some of those dark shadows for the trees in the background and all of the different areas. If you know me, I am all about the contrasty, moody lighting, so this was just so much fun for me. I also really love Moonlight. I think it has a really beautiful, soft quality to it, so I was super excited to paint one like this with Moonlight. Generally, the whole process here is working from bigger to smaller details to really get the textures in there. The big biggest part of this piece was definitely just trying to get all of the variation in lighting correct with all of the forms in the background and trying to get some of that foggy feel as well. This first still that I was working from was a cool color palette, so for the second one I wanted to do something warm and kind of go on the opposite end of the spectrum, a kind of foggy forest image. It has this gradient from orange to purple in the background which is throughout the entire thing, both in the foggy elements of the background and also in the lighting on the trees. I'm working from the far back to the foreground, so that also really means that I'm working from light to dark, getting darker as things get closer. The biggest part of this image was really trying to create that atmospheric depth. I also painted Jin on his horse as well, of course. As we're moving to the closest foreground, we're creating the ground area as it's dark and in shadow, then adding some really small details of like leaves blowing and some smaller branches coming off of the trees and things like that. I also was really trying to get that effect of the low-lying fog in there. I think the hardest part of this one was really creating that gradient in every element. I had so much fun doing these ones that I just kept going. I took some of my own stills in the game the next day and painted those myself as well. Since that was not technically part of the week, I'm gonna include the process of those two over on Patreon if anybody is interested. Finally on to our final test of the week, which is our repaint of the fishing village. I started with the water and blocking in the colors for that, which is the same that I started out the first one. The week didn't change me that much. Generally, I wanted to make this one have more dynamic range than the other one. Although it is a really misty piece, I did want to have a little bit more contrast and just have a bigger difference from foreground to background. I also changed the composition just slightly. I did want to keep the painting mostly as similar as possible, just enhanced a little bit. I'm still sticking with a similar color palette. However, I did change some of the colors a little bit. They ended up being a little less muted this time around, which definitely gave a different feel to the piece. With the roofs in this one, I did kind of choose a weird yellowish brown color, which I was not the biggest fan of at the end. I tried to work on the window reflections, but to be honest, trying to imagine where they would reflect without any kind of reference was so difficult. All I can say is there was an attempt. One thing that I do think I improved on pretty dramatically over this week is the water reflections. Granted, there was not much place to go than up from the first one, but goes to show you that doing a decent amount of studies on something really does help you. I still have a lot of difficulty trying to get the light to look exactly how I want it, especially without reference. And I also didn't really study artificial light sources during this week, so that's another thing that I would probably like to work on a little bit more. I did add some small elements that I thought would be interesting in the piece that I didn't put in the first one, so I did add some fishing poles off of the boats. I think there's qualities that I really like 
both versions. Overall, I would say this one has a little bit less of a misty quality than the first one that I did. I do wish that it had a little bit more of that, but at the same time, I do also like the more dynamic range that this one has. And I like a lot of the details that I added in the second one a lot more. I think that they're more thought out and a little bit more defined. Then it was fog time, so we're watering down some white again to layer the fog in. It was actually really interesting to do the same painting twice. I don't think I've ever specifically done the exact same painting two times. So here is a comparison of the final pieces. This was a really nice project to work on. I didn't get to everything that I wanted to work on, of course, because it's only a week. I'm gonna put my lesson plan in the description for the week, just in case anybody wants to do this and you want to send it to me, tag me in the experience, make a video if you want. I would love to see that so much. It's really not necessary to do it in a consecutive week. I did not even either. As always, I wanna say the biggest thank you to everyone over on Patreon and also anyone that has supported on coffee. It makes such a huge difference to the channel and me being able to keep working on projects. So just thank you so much.